questions at the end of the meeting. Well, thank you so much, Director Williams. I really appreciate it um, and am very grateful for you being here. I would really like to thank Director Haynes for being here. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Dire Executive Director Happy Haynes is the Executive Director of Parks and Recreation for the City and County of Denver. Um, she has been uh, just a, a fixture in the City and County of Denver and she is um, just one of our greatest assets. We're so grateful that she's joining us today to walk us through um, updating us on what's going on with our Parks and Recs Department. And we're, we really are appreciative of your time. Um, thank you so much for joining us and I will stop talking and let you take it away. Um, please just tell me when I need to advance slides and what I need to do for you to make this all go. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you uh, so much, Councilwoman. Uh, and to all of the other uh, council members and, and to everyone from central, East Central and Southeast Denver, um, um, who knew that we'd be connecting this way um, just a few months ago. But, uh, um, uh, please, and please bear with me, I am joining you partly by video and partly by phone because uh, I am um, sitting in my office and we have notoriously bad Zoom connections here. And so in case I should lose you on the screen, I will still be with you um, uh, by phone. And so um, today what I thought I would do is focus, because I know so many people's attention and concerns are around um, this pandemic, the crisis we're in, how we're managing and responding uh, to this crisis, and more importantly, uh, how, how are, what are the steps we're taking to, to get back towards normal, or at least some kind of a new normal, but how, how are we recovering? And so I'm going to spend the bulk um, of my time uh, sharing with you just some uh, thoughts about uh, what we've been doing and what we're thinking about uh, uh, going forward. So if you can advance to the next slide and I'll uh, keep up with you on my screen, if I could find it. Come on. Um, so the uh, COVID response for our agency is in a number of phases, and I will, you will see from this uh, uh, slide presentation that uh, we, we've made some adjustments just since we started. Um, so the three phases really correspond to all of the information that we've known um, from our public health agencies with guidance from them, with guidance from uh, uh, the CDC, and um, uh, the uh, information that we've been sharing with our colleagues around the metro area and uh, our colleagues uh, around the country through the National Recreation and Parks Association. So we've been staying very closely connected, sharing best practices, sharing uh, concerns and uh, common uh, issues and helping one another uh, cope and, and, and really take steps um, to help our, our uh, public. Um, so uh, right from the very beginning in, during the uh, stay at home, what we call our phase one of, of our COVID response, which is really from a public health perspective, the objective to slow the spread, what, what was a rapidly spreading virus uh, and that resulted in a number of closures, all of us being sent home. Uh, and I, I mean that both in terms of our employees uh, in the city, but also uh, 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 residents throughout the city being asked uh, to stay at home. So we started off with closures of our recreation centers, our playgrounds, our pools, all of our athletic fields and um, outdoor uh, facilities. We canceled classes uh, and uh, event uh, permits as well. So it was a pretty uh, drastic and, and, and uh, comprehensive uh, shutdown, if, if you will. Um, still, we knew that there were gonna be some essential services that we needed to continue to provide. Um, and those included um, both services, direct services to the public in the form of our uh, 19 meal sites. We have lots of children um, who regularly um, uh, obtain their evening meals through our recreation uh, programs, and we didn't want to shut that down, uh, knowing that 
kids were home from school, families were going to be stuck, many were not going to be able to work, uh, and so we have maintained those uh, 19 meal sites uh, throughout uh, this crisis. Um, most of our employees that are in the offices and in our recreation centers were sent home on administrative leave. Uh, some of them are working from home, and, and I, I give kudos to our safety team uh, for literally in two days setting up everyone um, to work from home uh, and setting protocols in place for uh, workplace safety for those essential employees who continued, and those primarily were our uh, parks uh, department, uh, in, um, uh, maintenance shops and facilities, people who manage and, and care for our facilities. Um, we also experienced immediately a hiring freeze, uh, if you will, or at least no more hiring until we have an understanding of what the budget impacts from this crisis might be. Uh, during this first phase, we started to redeploy a number of our staff who were not working um, both helping um, with our citywide response to help the city stay afloat and also redeploying within uh, some tasks within the department. Those included uh, providing shelter staffing. We provided shelters uh, at um, uh, two of our recreation centers until the larger shelters were opened. Uh, we've been providing um, transportation for um, uh, shelter, uh, two shelters. Um, uh, we opened three of our centers for child care to provide child care for first responders and had to quickly scramble to get the, the necessary licensing from the state. Um, the child care is being provided by uh, employees who ordinarily would be running our summer camp um, activities. Um, we set up a parks patrol or a park ambassadors, if you will, to help um, make sure that people were abiding by the public health rules in our parks and 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 just uh, uh, making sure that there uh, everyone could uh, uh, enjoy our parks safely. And we know that from the very beginning, people were turning to our parks in record numbers uh, as a respite from this stay at home and being cooped up uh, in their homes all day. Uh, finally, we have been, we were tasked to help run the cities. Um, uh, PPE, which is uh, personal protective equipment uh, donation center, um, and we are also uh, using some of our employees who uh, uh, have been impacted by the closures to help backfill on some of our parks on calls because our the the employees we normally hire during the spring to help us get our parks ready and keep them maintained through the season. Uh, we weren't able to hire this year. So we are really, really uh, low on uh, staffing uh, in that area and a, a big challenge. If you'll go to the next slide, please. Um, so uh, an, another part of phase one, we wanted to try to provide as many opportunities for people to enjoy our facilities as possible. So not immediately, but eventually we were able to open our golf courses uh, with some uh, restrictions. Uh, our parks remained open from the very beginning, uh, primarily for white, uh, walking and biking. No group activities, as you know, under that uh, initial order. Um, there were no gatherings uh, 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 except for family uh, groups. No shared uh, e equipment, playgrounds, and facilities were closed. Um, our recreation center facilities were closed as well. Uh, except for the uh, child care and meal programs, which I mentioned. And of course, all of our activities were closed. Um, we did, uh, we were able within um, a couple of weeks of the uh, uh, closures, our staff was tasked with uh, providing online programming and they did a, an amazing job of getting um, uh, classes and programs and fitness uh, via online programming. Um, and that has been wildly successful. All of those uh, have been uh, uh, um, very heavily subscribed. Next uh, slide, please. Um, so moving into phase two, which is our, now we're starting to think about what can we bring back online? What can we reopen and what programs can we begin to offer again? This is, um, and these phases correspond to what we've done in terms of a, of a risk assessment. Um, 
what activities um, and and how risky are there are they based on um, their uh, um, um, distancing uh, around issues uh, of of uh, exposure, the intensity of exposure, um, and um, a, a number of other factors that are shared um, through the CDC and with the health agencies across the country. So the medium, the first phase was the low risk uh, activities that we got moving right away. This is our medium risk category, and you'll see from this, this phase two has several iterations of, of a, a really a phase uh, opening and reopening of, of facilities. We started off with golf uh, with some precautions, uh, one person per uh, cart, except for family members. Um, we just recently were able to open our campground up in the mountain parks and start to uh, provide um, uh, programs, uh, our, our boating and paddle boarding uh, programs at our lakes, primarily in the uh, uh, mountain parks, but throughout the city. Uh, we were able to uh, just recently in the past uh, couple of weeks restart our volunteer program. All of those volunteer projects had been um, put on hold and begin uh, and also allow residents of the same household to share uh, uh, equipment. And some of you who may have encountered or heard from people from our uh, parks ambassadors in the parks where we were encouraging people not to toss footballs and frisbee, uh, and that was because uh, shared equipment was one of the high risk, um, uh, or at least a medium risk activity in terms of the potential for spreading uh, the virus and, and um, which we were trying to control. Um, so if you'll move to the next um, slide. So phase 2B, uh, and you'll see that we've got rough timeframes um, that last one was, we started in May and has continued through this month. Um, starting this month and extending into July, we are working on um, reopening these uh, next set of, of activities and facilities. Uh, you will, it, last week, we just announced the reopening um, and replaced all of the nets and backboards to our basketball courts and our tennis courts. Um, we provide allowed uh, uh, with some restrictions. So those particularly only up to uh, uh, 10 people on our basketball courts and um, uh, tennis courts, of course, um, with, with a, uh, a 10 person limit as well. Um, we lifted our shared equipment restrictions so people can get back out in our big um, lawn spaces and uh, throw footballs and frisbees and and some of the other activities that uh, people have uh, missed, and uh, uh, beginning again with some small picnics and, and gatherings of that type. We expect uh, any day now to reopen the Buffalo Bill uh, Museum up in in our mountain parks. Uh, next slide. So uh, uh, phase two C. Uh, um, this is still part of our medium risk activities and um, we you know we were very carefully spending time on each of these decisions making sure that we did them right um, following the uh, governor's orders but filling in lots of details because the governor's orders give just very broad uh, guidelines and our city uh, um, health department has helped us in each of these with the details on what the conditions are for reopening these facilities so that they are safe. Um, so we are working on, and I know we've had lots of questions um, in this next phase, probably starting early in July through August, we will be working on reopening our dog parks with some restrictions, including physical distancing and um, other, uh, other uh, requirements. Um, we will, uh, we're very glad uh, you know, given this summer and with our kids uh, out of school, to be able to do some summer camps, uh, we we will only be able to do um, a small percentage of what we ordinarily do during the summer. But we do intend to uh, have about 25 to 30 percent of our summer camp programs starting in the early July. Um, we will start with some. Um, 
uh, phasing in some outdoor recreation uh, activities, um, you know, potentially outdoor uh, classes and uh, programs. Um, uh, sports leagues can begin primarily with skills and drills activities, not full-blown um, league or tournament uh, activities. Uh, they will they will be restricted uh, to their um, activities with up to 10 people. Um, we are looking at big questions. We know we've heard from people about pools. Um, we may open some pools uh, later uh, in the summer. Um, there will probably be very a small number uh, and and with some pretty significant restrictions. Pools are actually not a medium risk. Pools are in the highest risk category for lots of different reasons. Um, uh, but we, we're going to do we're make an effort to find some safe ways to at least open pools for some some restricted activities. Um, finally, we may look at some limited indoor activities, but again, uh, indoor recreation, indoor facilities in general tend to be very high risk. Um, and we're worried about uh, indoor activities and then because of the restrictions, um, really not being able to provide those with, um, with equitable access across the system, and, and, and that's very uh, important to us. And finally, we will begin slowly during this uh, uh, phase to um, uh, start back our permit program, uh, uh, again, on a limited basis, both indoor and outdoor uh, facilities. And we have some citywide teams that are working on those uh, permit permitted events and uh, other activities and, and finding ways to do them uh, safely uh, so that we don't find ourselves um, um, going back to you know our normal activities and actually uh, causing the the uh, the health numbers which have been going down and remaining steady to shoot back up again. Next slide. Finally, phase three, uh, our highest risk uh, category, um, and these will be the last to open. Uh, I didn't uh, put the time frame in here, but I think it's safe to say that this is probably very late summer, uh, and uh, I, I would uh, I, I think this is probably uh, September through the end of the year uh, process for um, complete o openings on these. This would be opening our golf course restaurants for on-premise consumption. Um, and it, there's a possibility that we can do that sooner as some of the other restaurants in town have been able to do. So uh, if we can get any of these open sooner and do them safely, we will work on those. Um, our, um, all of our outdoor uh, recreation facilities will be open for full play, including uh, leagues and um, uh, full competition. Um, we'll start to work on our opening our indoor recreation centers and pools and reinstituting some of the uh, programs uh, and activities um, uh, without the uh, capacity and number restrictions and distancing and all of those things, we, we hope. Um, <clears throat> I didn't say earlier, but hope it goes without saying, all of these things are dependent on uh, the guidance that we receive from our local health department and from the state health department on what is uh, uh, safe. Uh, and finally, we look towards this fall for returning many of our employees who are working from home uh, back into uh, the web and to the Denver Post building. Um, although I will say, and you see at the top of this slide, I put a new normal. So I, I uh, firmly believe that um, we're not going to get back to the same place we were before. There are going to be many changes um, just in the way we start to do our new business um, protocols and, and how we operate um, with, you know, being more mindful about um, um, safety and uh, sanitary conditions and so on. Um, and so uh, I think that's the last slide related to our COVID response. I thought I would spend a couple of minutes just sharing with all of you a quick operations and maintenance uh, update across the the uh, uh, um, this area of town um, and um, 
our uh, ops team put together just some highlights about some things that are going to be happening this summer and into the uh, the rest of this year. So we continue to work on water conservation and installing our um, upgrading our irrigation system so that we can save um, water uh, while while uh, maintaining well maintaining our parks. Um, so we're working on some of these in the East District. Uh, we're using drone technology now to help us with um, managing the efficiency and mapping where our needs are in terms of um, irrigation. Um, our uh, crews are working on a few median renovations, although I have to say, honestly, in a, in a limited budget scenario going forward, that, you know, we may see some changes there. Uh, our um, uh, horticulture staff is busy, has been busy growing and planting beds. You will see a difference, uh, again, based on um, resource constraints uh, as a result of this crisis and the city's budget uh, um, reductions uh, uh, and revenue um, reductions that um, you won't see quite as many as you have in the past, but uh, they are out there uh, doing the best they can. Um, you will see as a part of our, uh, um, our parks tax, what we call our legacy fund, um, the refresh crews that we hired last year are now in full gear. And so they are doing um, refresh um, programs in a number of our parks, um, just uh, painting, fixing uh, parking lots, crosswalks, curbs, uh, fixing up some of our uh, picnic areas, just uh, a lot of the cosmetic things that make, uh, make a difference in how uh, our, parks, our parks are looking. Um, our district crews along the lines of sustainability and resilience uh, are uh, continuing on a program to convert many of our, um, uh, much of our equipment to a more sustainable uh, operation. So um, we're doing that. We're reducing our um, uh, pesticide use in some of our areas um, and, and um, employing some um, pesticide management best practices. Um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, again, we'll be testing those to see how effective they are, but our overall objective is to try to reduce um, the use of uh, pesticides. We continue with our lake management. You know, we, we hear from people every year when uh, uh, the inevitable heat heat wave occurs and we, we experience some of the algae and other problems with our lake. So we're working very uh, carefully with our um, naturalist team to uh, on water quality and managing uh, our lakes across the city uh, as naturally as possible. And finally, um, uh, I, I think uh, um, I mentioned the natural areas team. We have moved that uh, from uh, um, uh, to our park operations. So that they're working more uh, in a sync. As you know, many of our natural areas are adjacent to or part of our regular parks. And so we've moved that team into our parks operations. Um, and so, uh, again, we are um, making some changes to our ball fields, uh, uh, again, with equipment, uh, trying to keep them up to high standard, but also uh, trying to be more sustainable in our operations there. So I think that um, uh, concludes. Um, I, I don't know how we are on time, um, uh, Councilwoman Sawyer. I do have a spreadsheet that gives a just a very quick summary of some of the capital projects that are going to be happening. Uh, and I won't go through them one by one, but I can get – if. I can make my technology work. I can share my screen and let people just take a quick glance at uh, the project. Um, if you wouldn't mind, hang on one second. I think I have to do something on my technology end in order to make your technology work. So now it should, now you should be able to do that. All did, right. Did I do it? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yep. Okay. You did. Go team. Okay. Every Everybody uh, able to see the screen? Wonderful. Yeah, DPS project report. So we pulled out the projects that are in the central east and southeast uh, uh, corridors.
Just a reminder of the number of projects that we have uh, going in the, the different council districts. Um, um, and I'll scroll down in a moment, but let you get a, a gander at this first part of the uh, uh, of the spreadsheet. So, um, you know, this, again, uh, as the council members, as you as council members know, the extraordinary um, revenue and budget um, uh, challenges that we're facing, we still have, uh, we're still moving forward with projects that we have uh, in place. Uh, we may need to make adjustments as we go through the year. May, we may need with some projects to uh, break them into phases um, in order to meet our current um, uh, budget uh, issues. But we, uh, these are the ones that we believe uh, still uh, in, intend to move forward with and, and to complete this year. Let me move down to the last part of the uh, list. The, the perfect part? <laughs> I think we're getting into districts uh, seven and and ten, and I am not going to get into whose district is better. I I uh, I I know better than to get sucked into that. Uh, That's probably uh, debate. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot going on across uh, 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 across the area. Some of the not so sexy but necessary things like HVAC. Uh, and um, um, but you know, and some very big items. As you see, we're in the midst of the Congress Park uh, pool replacement, uh, 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 and had a wonderful town hall meeting just a, a few weeks ago um, in this wonderful new virtual uh, world. Um, and you see the Congress tennis court um, as well. I will I will say something about these the capital projects and our new approach. As we move forward, we, it, uh, similar to what our colleagues in Dottie are doing, we call it a one build approach. And so as much as possible, when we're in a park or in a part of town and we've got one project going, we're trying to link them or sync them with other uh, capital projects at the same time so that it's a more comprehensive uh, approach to getting, getting in there and getting everything done as much as possible. Not always possible, but we we think it makes sense in in a particular park if we're doing sidewalks in one project and you know a playground in another and some natural areas work in another that we um, uh, package those together as a single project and get in there and get it done uh, a, as an overall uh, effort. So um, uh, you'll you'll see that happening more and more as we move forward. So I'll stop there and see if there are any questions. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing all of this information. We really appreciate it. And we do have a bunch of questions. Um, look, a couple of easy, uh, short and sweet starting ones. How will you be enforcing the limit of no more than 10 people on tennis and basketball courts? Um, that's a really uh, great question. Um, and I, I, I will say honestly, um, we um, we uh, are uh, reducing our park patrol uh, operations um, as we go into the summer, and we're trying to start reopening other facilities. Uh, the good news is because of the the more limited restrictions, uh, we there's less to enforce. Um, the ten uh, person rule is going to be tough. I, I think it's going to be uh, a spot kind of uh, approach. Um, we won't always have uh, individuals everywhere. Uh, our, of course, our park rangers will continue to be in all of our parks. Uh, and as usual, their approach um, is, it's less about enforcement, really, and more about reminding people that to continue to uh, operate safely in a COVID envir environment where we're still being watchful about the spread of this virus, that we encourage people to follow the public health guidelines. So it really is less of an enforcement approach and more of a, a public education and awareness. Um, and we will have signage uh, in uh, on all of these new facilities, again, reminding people of what uh, the protocols are. 
And I will tell you that our experience, um, even when we had a high presence with our park patrols, is that people really tried uh, uh, to uh, uh, comply with the rules. Um, you know, people uh, were distancing themselves when um, the, the uh, recommendations were made to wear masks, many more people were doing so. Um, and so we, we believe that when people know, here's the set of rules, as is generally the case in our parks, most people abide by those rules. And so we're counting on that and we're counting on the fact that people in our city uh, recognize that we're facing an unprecedented crisis here and that unless we all pitch in and do our parts, we will, we will, uh, uh, will not come out of it um, in, in, in sooner, n sooner, number one, and as, as uh, healthy as, and safely as we can. And so we're counting on that sort of Denver spirit to uh, everybody, have everybody do their part and um, and that's by following the rules which are provided to us through our public health uh, agencies to ensure our public safety. Great, Councilman Cash uh, Cashman, did you have a question? Yeah, just just to follow up on that, Happy. Uh, first of all, thanks for taking the time with us today. Uh, along with the ten per ten person maximum, uh, it sounds to me, and I've gotten questions from a few neighborhood groups looking. To, to do movies in the park or concerts in the park with social distancing. It sounds like that's not in the cards. It's not in the cards immediately. So we're working, uh, you know, our, our plan, uh, um, the reopening of the facilities that we just announced last week and are continuing this next week or two um, uh, correspond with the state public health orders, which are still uh, uh, have a 10 person limit. We do expect to see some changes in those public health orders. And we are at least planning uh, our next moves uh, in anticipation that those numbers uh, will go up. Uh, and further, we have uh, a pretty robust um, uh, uh, committee uh, working in the city um, and, and which includes a number of um, um, uh, partner uh, organizations, um, our arts and venues and uh, Visit Denver and others uh, working on uh, our venues and our uh, public uh, events because every, everybody wants to try to get back to those as soon as possible. So we're working on how to do those safely and people are exploring, you know, drive-in you know, activities, um, how do we do some of our larger um, uh, outdoor events uh, with, with some safety uh, considerations. So that work is ongoing. And I do expect that over the course of the next uh, couple of months or so, you will see us slowly and gradually moving towards having uh, more of those events. Um, will we have, uh, you know, uh, a taste of Colorado type of event? Uh, probably not um, anytime soon, but uh, I, I do expect um, we will continue to raise those numbers from 10 to 25 to 50 and beyond um, over the course of the next uh, few weeks. Thanks for that, Hap. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Director Haynes, this is uh, Chris Hines. Um, since you have the spreadsheet in, uh, in front of all of us, uh, I noticed the Civic Center Greek Theater Alcove has $10,000 uh, allocated to it. I, I seem to recall that the, um, the GEO bond also has some funds allocated for, uh, to, to the Greek Amphitheater. I want to say it's $3 million for the theater yes. itself and another million yes. for the Yes, these, these were primarily, I think, uh, put in as a part of the neighborhood level. Um, um, but we do uh, have, um, um, th so this is some design work, some preliminary design work that you're seeing here. Um, and this is our normal uh, uh, capital budget. So the, the bond project, which has uh, uh, over $3 million dollars, uh, is still intact, and we do uh, anticipate moving forward on that. Um, we're pretty uh, uh, excited about that project. I'm excited about it too. So, but related to uh, to the, uh, we, we've had some 
some folks uh, using the Greek amphitheater and um, the grounds in our state capital, and uh, and and they've they've personalized it. Um, and uh, there, so uh, this is related to a, a question that someone has asked about graffiti at the Kennedy Golf Course. Um, I'd like to also ask a related question. Um, does Parks have um, uh, any thoughts, and it might be too early right now to have a full, um, you know, full plan, but, uh, but there's graffiti on, uh, you know, in, in Civic Center, there's graffiti, well, there's graffiti over lots of uh, our parks and government buildings, um, but uh, so related to the um, Kennedy Golf Course graffiti, um, you know, what's the best way for us uh, in, uh, to address the graffiti and vandalism in our parks? Uh, a great question. And I will tell you um, that our downtown, our downtown parks crew uh, specifically has just been working overtime, um, uh, responding to um, the damage and the vandalism that was done in the uh, uh, Civic Center Park. Um, I think that's beginning to diminish, although there are still those um, who, um, Who's keep doing their thing? Um, uh, yeah, unfortunate. Uh, 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 think that the their voices of protest uh, um, should be manifested in, in destruction, uh, which is which is very unfortunate. I, I will say uh, uh, I, I've been very um, gratified by um, uh, you know sort of an equal response from residents who seen the damage literally uh with you know without any um you know any um requests on our part just showed up in the park the next day and you know to lend a hand and say you know we care about this park and we want to help and so over the you know the last uh, couple of weeks we've had lots of volunteers from all over the city uh, uh, coming out and lending a hand. And, and I, I can't tell you how much our crews have been gratified by that support and they've really ma helped make a difference. Um, it, it's difficult. Um, you know, we, we are dipping into resources that would probably be spent uh, in other ways um, to, uh, to respond to this damage. But we feel very strongly that um, uh, we we need to uh, address it. Um, we have had to call our uh, in our specialist. Not all of the damage uh, because this is a historic site uh, and very sensitive um, in many ways. And so our restoration activities we've had to rely on some of our um, uh, historic restoration uh, contractors to do some of the work. So maybe the reason why you haven't seen all of it removed yet um, because it will take some time and very delicate work to ensure that we don't do damage, further damage to the facilities by trying to uh, get the graffiti off. So I, you know, I, I uh, implore everyone to, uh, you know, convince uh, those who uh, I, I think um, so legitimately are uh, raising their voices in, in, uh, in protest and outrage of what has happened in in, a, in our country, um, to um, to uh, to find other ways, um, uh, more constructive ways, um, to ex express that, uh, and not uh, damage our 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 public assets. And uh, so I, I think that's one thing is just you know, stand up for uh, what, you know, our parks are places, you know, that, that really create equity for our cities that, you know, they're there for everyone. And so uh, I, I call on people to respect those places uh, and Civic Center, especially, I mean, this is our park that is traditionally the park to raise our voices. And this is where we come as a community to express ourselves and to protest and to celebrate and to mourn and to do all of the things that civic uh, engagement and civic voice um, provides. And uh, we want to protect that space for, to, so that we can continue over the years to use it that way, um, I, I think in a respectful way. So um, we, you know, we we hope that uh, we're not going to use all of our uh, financial resources. However, responding 
uh, to these issues, but we will do what it takes. Happy, thanks so much. Would you do me a favor and scroll back up to the top? There's a couple of district four um, uh, questions. And so they're hoping that maybe you can just scroll back up to the top so they can- There we go. Take a look, yeah, thank you. Um, I really appreciate if you wouldn't mind just leaving it there. Um, and then when do, when are the playgrounds gonna be opened and how are they gonna be cleaned? Do you, do you have a plan for that yet and a date? Yeah, we have a plan for half of your question. So the uh, <laughs> playgrounds, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, before, I, before I even uh, uh, completed the uh, presentation that I made to you, we, uh, we reached a decision just today uh, on um, reopening uh, playgrounds. Um, so that will happen um, within the next uh, few days. Uh, we will not uh, be cleaning our, uh, the, uh, our playgrounds. It is, we have over 150 playgrounds of, of uh, various sizes um, and the, the requirements um, for cleaning or sanitizing uh, playgrounds is is out of the question. I mean, is is a uh, um, is cost prohibitive? Yeah. So we will be providing guidance to people one about limiting the numbers um, uh, on the playground uh, to ten at a time, and we will be uh, strongly encouraging people who come to the playgrounds to bring their own hand sanitizing um, supplies. Um, and to protect themselves and their families and their children. Um, but we don't have, uh, we don't currently have, and we wouldn't have the resources available to us to clean or sanitize um, uh, playgrounds in our parks. Okay, um, thank you for that. And, and then is there, um, is there a way that you can post this, this, um, document or is there a way you can send it to us and we can share it with sure. the community? We'd there, be glad to send it to you. That would be fantastic. There's a couple of people yeah. who are asking about projects that aren't listed on here. Um, um, Hampton Heights Trail, I think is one. Kennedy Graffiti. Um, I think those are both maybe in District 4. Councilwoman Black, do you want to Ask yeah, I think the Hamden Heights, it maybe depend on the, uh, whether, uh, I, and I don't know if the Hand, Hand, Hamden Heights walks replacement includes the trails there or we're, it's a semantic difference, but we can certainly get, um, you know, answers uh, uh, to anyone or to uh, Councilwoman Black to provide to folks who have those questions. Are, are, are people using the chat or is that what? Yeah. So if you're, those are in the yeah, chat. if you're capturing those, we'll be uh, we'll be glad to follow up with uh, each of you with uh, responses to those. Yeah, I I responded to the Kennedy Golf Course one and the. Um, we'll, Did you we'll tell follow. them that you were going out there personally to get rid of that graffiti? The good news, Happy, is that the graffiti is on some concrete. Um, structures that don't belong to Denver. <laughs> but we are working on getting a mural. Um, and I'm still trying to get clarification on the Hampton Heights trails. It's been uh, very confusing. But Tanya, I will follow up with you on that. Yeah, we will be happy to have our, our uh, team uh, work with you and, and get, get that confusion uh, settled. Thank you. Yeah, this has been so helpful. Um, and then just a couple of questions around kind of what um, I know that your your original slides had mentioned the um, plan for phase. I think it was to like C. Um, I got a little confused, but for kids to start playing in in non contact sports like baseball, um, is that something that you see happening this summer? Yeah. Yes, so the uh, the restrictions that we've lifted on our uh, fields also include what we call uh, uh, skills and drills, because what the the governor's orders uh, enable um, uh, some um, outdoor field play, um, but the limits that they have provided, so that's up to 25 individuals, those limits um, uh, uh, virtually mean that you can do things like some practice, some skills and drills, but it wouldn't enable most of our uh, teams or uh, organized sports 
to uh, host games and do that kind of thing because uh, by the time you put um, team members and coaches um, and uh, on the field, you've reached your limit. And so what what uh, we we typically call this 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 early phase of organized sports uh, the skills and drills, which is you get out there on the fields, you practice, you hit balls, you you're not into a full uh, competition mode. So that last phase that I that uh, that the slides indicate uh, are when we uh, anticipate um, you know more more full tournament league play that kind of thing where when you're starting to count spectators and and officials and those kinds of things and two teams instead of just one that uh you know you you would um uh and so we we will follow we, we will be following um the uh um state health department uh, orders on that and and uh, again first first step skills and drills, and then next uh, uh, full uh, tournament and full league play. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time and your willingness to come on and answer our questions and um, you know share this information with the community. We're so grateful for your expertise and your leadership during this time. Um, thank you for you know all that you do for our city and for our community. Um, I think that's it for the questions. Does anyone else have any other uh, questions that you want to ask or to, to join in on anything? Otherwise, I think it's time to wrap up. Yes, well, uh, thank you uh, all for asking me to join you. I, I just uh, I, I, uh, wanna give a shout out to uh, my uh, amazing uh, parks and recreation team that have done things they would never have imagined and you know, without question and, and with uh, really with an eye toward um, um, you know, continuing to serve our community as best we can. And uh, never was the phrase that my mother used often with me, go outside and play more important than it has been during this crisis. Agreed, agreed. Well, thank you um, for your time. And again, for all that you do for us. I should give you a view of our, our, uh, our uh, downtown team's handiwork. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I am gonna just awesome. put up the contact information for um, all of our elected officials and um, Director Haynes, your contact information for Parks and Rec is on there as well. So our, um, you know, if anyone has other questions or follow-up questions, they know how to get a hold of us and they can contact any of us. Um, thank you all for joining us. Thanks to the community for your participation and for joining us. Uh, we will be back, I believe, on the 28th. Um, and so I look forward to all of you, to being with all of you then. And until then, stay healthy and safe. And thanks for your time. And everyone take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.